Hi Jake, thanks Hello. so much for talking to us. Uh, I just wanted to start off by, one well, the first question I wanted to ask was, your other films you've written the script for, um, this is the first one I believe you hadn't written the script and you, you collaborated with Dan Schaefer on it. Um, how was that working you know, from someone else's script on your film? Oh, it, it was an absolute pleasure because I think one of the hardships of making low budget films in the UK, certainly when you're making your first movies, is that you tend to have to write the script yourself because um, you can't afford to work with a writer. And writing scripts, I enjoy it, but it's a, it's a lengthy process. And, you know, I enjoy the filmmaking more than the writing side. Mm. Um, and working with Dan Schaefer freed me up so I could concentrate all, all, all the fun of developing yeah. the idea, but, right. but then not having to do the physical sort of work of actually doing the writing yeah. side. And Dan is a natural writer. I mean, he writes, you know, if he's not doing something, he just sits there and writes. Right, Whereas right. if I'm not doing something, yeah. I kind of avoid writing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, but he, yeah, and he's, I, I love his work. I love, I love his comic book stuff. Mm. I don't know if you've read Dog Witch or no, The Scribbler. I, 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 I yeah. know all of them. Well, check. Well, anyone, yeah. anyone who enjoys Doghouse should yeah. basically go and check out um, the Dog Witch right. um, comic strip and um, his graphic novel, The Scribbler, um, okay. because they're both fan they're really fantastic. I mean, all his, all of his stuff is great, but they're the, my favourites, and uh, it's a real treat. And he's yeah. a brilliant writer, so yeah, working with him was just fantastic because for me, it meant he did a lot of the the, the kind of like the great writing work yeah. so when we showed the script around people could get into the script so much easier when a director writes mm. a script it tends to be very technical and it's a bit boring to oh, read okay. and yeah. having Dan writing it was it was just a far better experience and you know I loved it <laughs> brilliant um, and the actors the actors in the cast um, sorry the actors you cast in the in the leads they actually have very strong personalities they're kind of almost you know you kind of know what you're going to expect from Danny Dyer and I really like him but did you have to accommodate um, did you change the leads? Uh, sorry, did you change the characters uh, to match the actors you'd actually cast, or did you sort of go and look for someone that was a Danny Dyer sort of type or Stephen Graham? Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, we, we we when we wrote the characters, we wrote them as characters, not mm. not we didn't write them for specific actors because we never yeah. we never knew that we'd be able to get any specific actors. So we wrote the characters, but then once we had cast some of the characters, we then we then um, re retailored some of the stuff to suit suit those those kind of mm. performers because it makes sense to do that yeah, yeah. Um, but but we didn't change the characters specific particularly um because what was for him, for, him, yeah, for instance um the character of neil which is played by danny dyer mm. he is designed to be a misogynistic kind yeah. of guy and he is a typical your typical jack the lad yes, so yeah. when we were casting that role we yeah. were thinking well who better than danny dyer because yeah. who's the ultimate kind of british jack no, the lad yeah he's great yeah i think but, he's kind of underappreciated almost he is very yeah. underappreciated and i think in the future you know people will look back and they'll realize later in mm. his career that he, because he's i think he's going to become an actor like michael caine he's going yes. to be, he's like yeah. a, one of those british institutions and yeah. at the moment i think people often unfairly give them give him a hard time mm. but then again there's there are there's other he's got a huge amount of fans as well yeah, oh yeah yeah, yeah I and, love him I yeah, I love, him. yeah I love Danny and yeah, work, yeah. working with him is a real pleasure because mm. he's a complete pro and he's actually yeah. he's not quite like his image people that, yeah. that image is <laughs> that image is maybe too successful for yeah, him at times yeah. but um he's a smashing bloke mm. um but yeah, casting him in that role f was was great because mm. having this ultimate Jack the Lad character meant that he was going to bring stuff to the yeah. table as yeah. well because he's naturally got that in him. Mm. But because of like because of his views in the film, he actually suffers more because he, you've got this super blokey bloke mm. who's being terrorised by women. So yeah. women actually find that very fun to watch because yeah. he's, you've got. So he actually suffers because of his own views mm. and. Um, that was something that we really enjoyed playing with, and all of all of the different male characters in the film, like this bunch of friends, they also were designed to represent different aspects of the male psyche. Yeah, so, I thought that because it's a yeah. real mixed bunch. Yeah, which was yeah. the so the idea was to show it because yeah. uh, you know, but also it, I think a lot of people who when they have friends, they have mm. a group of quite diverse friends who. But sometimes yes. you wonder, oh, how they how, how comes these these guys are mates with mm. each other? But probably because they went to school or they play football, yeah. and you get the so you get these very different types. But that's something very much we wanted to explore. So you've got different male reactions to mm. things. So each of the characters kind of balances the others out in some right. ways. Okay. Yeah. And um, once again, you know, that was something that we wanted to do. And, and getting the casting for those was really important. So Yeah, I was going to ask about the cast, because it's almost like a sort of a, a who's who of UK talent. And it's great. <laughs> and only on the poster you've got Danny Dyer, um, Noel Clark, Noel Clark uh, Stephen, Stephen Graham. Graham. Um, and that, that's great because they, they, you know, they're all so recognisable. They're in so many great films. Was that conscious? Did you say I wanted to get the best people, or did he just sort of get them by accident? Well, no, no. I mean, with every film that you do, um, as you know, when you're about to to, to to get a film off the ground, um, 
you always want the best talent that you can possibly sure. get for it. Normally what happens is that you don't have enough money or the script isn't good enough to attract the talent. Mm. In this case, we almost didn't have enough money, but yeah. but we the script was good enough to attract that talent. Yeah. And you were asking earlier about working with the writer Dan Schaefer. Mm. What, what we had is so much more of a polished script that when we sent it out, that the actors got right. very excited by it. Because they could uh, actually see good yeah. parts. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. And, they're, and they're great parts and they're mm. beautifully written. Yeah. And that's what really attracted them to it. And also the fact for a couple of them as well, like Stephen Graham has never done a genre film before yeah, like this. Yeah, hadn't occurred yeah. to me until recently. Yeah. And, yeah. He, you know, his career is going stellar at yeah. the moment. Um, yeah. but, but for him, I think he was quite excited about doing a different type of film mm. that he had done. Yeah. So, and the same with um, Noel Clarke, you know, because he had been so successful with adulthood, yes. he's very yeah, aware yeah. that he has to be diverse in each role mm. he does. So he really wanted to play a much lighter kind of character and have much yes. more fun with it. Yeah, he so, does, yeah. yeah. And, and to, I'd just like to speak about some of the other actors, because, oh, yeah, because yeah. You, you talk about having some of the best British mm. talent, and I think we've also got some of the best writing mm. new talent. Um, uh, Lee Ingleby, who plays the character of Matt, uh, the comic book geek, is a sensational actor. Yes, yeah. And uh, fans may have seen him in the, some of the in the Harry Potter film. He's Sean Stanpike. Yeah, and, I wasn't sure who he played. Yeah, he, he, he the bus conductor it? on the night bus. Ah, and, okay, yeah, and yeah. he was in the uh, the ghost story thing at Christmas, um, oh, um, which was uh, the uh, League of Gentlemen yeah. guy thing, the oh, Crooked House. Crooked House. Yeah, and yeah. he once again he's an oh, excellent okay. performer. And yeah, he, yeah. But interesting enough, he had actually worked with Daniel Dyer years mm. ago in the film Borstal Boy, if you remember that. Yes, Borstal Boy. Yeah, so he's very young in that but um oh. but and he's also in master and commander oh is he yeah he's and he, he's <laughs> excellent in that. he's got a great scene in that yeah. where he you know he doesn't have the respect to the men mm. brilliant actor and oh is that him that's him he's yes a guy that, yeah he's a yeah yeah he's a, suicide that's right yeah there, that's but right yeah, yeah. yeah but he's a very oh, he, he, and he's worked it. with some great people and he's yeah. a, once again a brilliant performer mm. um an, another actor keith lee castle who plays mm. the, the character of patrick the kind of hippie gothy like guy yeah, yeah now he is a wonderful performer and he's mm. he's done a couple of horror films he did seed of chucky mm. and um he's he's done some tv stuff like urban gothic many yes. years ago yeah that's so really popular yeah he's vampirology really the one he was in yeah. yeah it's very good and um he's but more recently he's been doing some kids tv stuff mm. he's in young dracula so he's been yeah, playing yeah. a vampire which is kind of <laughs> an obvious big film but yeah. seeing him play this guy who's essentially having a bit of a nervous breakdown himself with yes. his self-help save yeah, yeah. I, 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 once again I think it's a beautiful performance and I think he's a real he's a guy to watch and he's really yeah. once again a really dynamic and interesting actor mm. and uh, Emil Marwa the Asian guy um, who yes. plays the character of Graham yeah. the gay guy in the mm. film and uh, he does a fantastic job with that and Emil was in East is East so right. once again yes. his stock yeah. is rising all the time so, so I really think we've got mm. we've got some of the new good talent you yeah know. I think that really comes across in the mm. film and, and it's, it's really nice to see so many good British actors yeah you know, well another one who plays Banksy yeah. Neil Maskell is yeah. fantastic as well a great yeah. character actor and Terry Stone who's mm. just done Rise of the Foot Soldier as well oh so, yes yeah, so yeah. Um, like I say I, mean, I think you're going to see a lot more of these guys mm. but obviously the main cast of like yeah. like Danny Noel and Stephen have made it but these other guys are really coming up and yeah. I think that hopefully Doghouse will be one of those films people look back at in a few and years a and they ensemble. go don't go blimey yeah, yeah. that's an amazing <laughs> yeah but yeah. when we were, when we were doing it then I think the actors were kind of they really enjoyed working with each other because they kind of all knew that they were good yeah and I think that inspires yeah. actors especially when you're on set with them mm. um, because yeah we got I, I think that their performances became you really believe them as mates and they became mm. they all became really good friends as well so that that wasn't yeah. fake at all do you know what I mean yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. that's I think that camaraderie is on screen yes and it, it's yeah. hard to it's hard to you can't really fake that mm. so it's almost like that chemistry really worked in, yeah. in our favour yeah. no, that's brilliant. <laughs> Um, and I want to talk about the beginning of the film because what I liked is it, it gets going really quickly and you've got quite a lot of characters to introduce. Yes. Um, and you, you get you know you get through them, but also it's quite subtle because you're starting to introduce immediately the themes of the film. So everyone's having problems in one way or the other. I mean, was that your intention was to get it moving quickly and but introduce stuff you know uh, in a, give you start giving you realize there's going to be a lot of depth to this. Yes, of course. So, um, I mean, the the main thing for us was to put this whole idea in the audience's mind to start setting up the subtext. Mm. Is that all of the all of the main characters are um, metaphorically in the doghouse. Yes. Yeah. Which is the whole idea. So we get to see that they're all struggling in their own relationships mm. and they're all messing up to some extent. So therefore, as they go off on this weekend to support their mate, you know, the mm. fact that when it all turns bad, you're going to see the, how they cope. And because they can't cope in their normal relationships, how are mm. they going to cope with... Uh, psychotic killer cannibal women yeah. so that's that's <laughs> kind of that's that's the kind of conceit which i think also adds to the humor mm. of it as well so yeah it was very important to start building the building the, the subtext straight mm. away and getting that in there because i think that's what gives the film more depth absolutely i mean and that, that's one of the things that really <clears throat> drew me to it was that there is so much more going on i mean the, you can look at just the horror element the thriller element but then 
when you start to look at who's actually terrorizing them you know mm. there's a uh, bride zombie you know there's a uh, there's a there's a yeah. zombie. Well, of course, yeah. Well, the, yeah. They, well, the different the different zombirds, zombirds. as we call sorry, them. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. No, no, yeah, we're, <laughs> that's a new, now new to, yeah. new phrase. Um, yeah. The different zombirds, all they were designed mm. by myself and Dan to right. be. They they are um, metaphorical uh, ideas of of basically male anxieties. Yeah. So they both they're, they're visual metaphors. So the bride would represent fear of marriage and commitment. Yes. The snipper represents yeah. castration anxiety. Mm. <laughs> the, the fat bird represents the idea that you may be scared of your girlfriend getting overeating. Yeah. And that, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't spot that. The, the, goth, the gothic witch yeah. represents females' n n natural intuitive power with nature. Oh, okay. So all, yeah. of the, all of them have a different, uh, different aspect mm. of what the, the female kind of things are that me men find frightening mm. so that was that was the whole idea and that's why each of them is very different and we could codify them with a great vi separate visual image mm. so even if you don't get that subtext it's still like i think as on a subconscious yeah. level it's there it's a bit like a dream where maybe it'll start yeah. maybe you'll start realizing it a bit later so people did mm. some people don't get that but that's why we've kind of dressed it up as an action zombie film sure. but with subtext yeah. <laughs> i mean that that was a thing to me it felt almost like a nightmare because most of it takes place at night well you know mm. a fair chunk of it uh, and it, it gets sort of a stranger and stranger <laughs> yes. as it goes along, and you start to realise it's almost like they've gone, all, they've all gone to sleep, and they're getting sucked into this dreadful place. It is definitely. But I think going to turning up and yeah. arriving in the town of Moodley would yeah. be a nightmare for pretty much yeah, anyone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even if there wasn't killer yeah. zombies there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those awful places that you just end up in by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and how important was it to you to actually make a film that did have more depth instead of just making like oh a slasher, someone's being chased, and is that mm. did, did you want to make a film that would have more resonance? Yes. Yeah. Uh, absolutely i mean with obviously with, with my earlier films um, and i've always had a mm. kind of a playful sense of fun with things but having working with dan schaefer who's you know we'll say his past work mm. certainly he's always been quite uh, interested in the kind of gender politics side of stuff so if you read dog witch and mm. scribbler you'll see that as well and that's one of his kind of preoccupations so when we were discussing doing a project we wanted to do something that would basically tie in both of our strengths mine mine the kind of visual kind of set yes. piece like yeah. motifs of these crazy things that kind of kick off and and happen and then dan with the more the thematic and mm. characters and the subtextual side so we try to marry both our strengths and yeah. hopefully that gives us a, a good pedigree for doghouse yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I think> so. <laughs> um I, I thought dog doghouse was like a really big step forward for you in, in terms of sort of the budget but also that i love the style of it and the Thank look you. of it um, have you learned much from your previous films? You know, because I know this was the biggest budget you yeah, worked with. Yeah, Doghouse is definitely a stylish sort of stylish, mm. the most stylish film I've done, and it's a it's a progression from my other work. If you if you kind of look at my other work, you'll see the kind of how I've, how I've yeah. got there. Yeah. Um, but with Doghouse, just having more money and more time, like having a full crew rather than a crew of like a handful of people. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, paying the crew and who actually yeah. know their jobs <laughs> rather than relying on people to help you out. Yeah. Things like that. So it makes a big difference on the screen. Mm. And, you know, it's working. It's like being the captain of the ship with a, with a mm. team of trained crew. And, and, and that's why the film, I think, looks so much better. Yes. And because obviously... And that's really, you know, in some ways I've been joking to people. Mm. If any, in, in a real way, this is like my debut film in the... Like, right, beca yeah. Because... All my other films yeah. are great grassroots films, which yes. were done, you know, on a wing and a prayer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is your first pro. Yeah, movie. this is my first yeah, yeah. Pro proper movie, yeah. if you if you like. Yeah. So, and and just having more time to shoot it, mm. and and the budget and the cast, and I think you could, uh, you can, you, I think I'm beginning to sort of show what I'm capable of now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, hopefully this is the first of many where I get a chance to step up and mm. with each film. With each film, you learn so much, and with, without yeah. my early films, I wouldn't have had the confidence to do something yeah. like Doghouse. But yeah. that's how you learn, and you know, I really hope that comes across to the audience. Mm.